Oh. Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm taking a break from painting because a lot of you have been requesting I do a sort of like equipment roundup video asking me if I can do a walkthrough of how I make my videos, what my setup is like, what equipment I use. So I thought I'd give myself a break from doing some painting and modeling stuff and instead we're going to take a look through how I make my videos. Just a quick disclaimer before we carry on with the video, I just want to say that this video is not a sponsored video. None of these brands have paid for any advertising for this video or anything. This is simply just me listing what I have and what I use to make my videos. Anyway, just to clear that up, now we can get back to the video. So here is the studio. This is where I do all of my filming and everything. Here we have the desk setup where I do all of my filming for all of my episodes. See, we have our own little Marika there from the other week. This is just a spare room we have in our house that we decked out to do all of the filming and all of the painting and all the modeling and everything in. All of that good stuff all goes on on this side of the room. If we come over to this side of the room, this is where I have my editing station. This is where I do all of my post-production work. This is where I do my actual day job. I have my PC down below. I have my double monitor screen up on top, which is really helpful for my editing and animating. And over here we have our secondary desk, which is where my partner works. And over here we have the little light box, which is where we do all of our photos with a white backdrop and all different color backdrops up there as well. So that's kind of just a quick overview of the room. Um, over here is where I have all of the prints that I've done all lined up on this bookshelf. So let's jump in and then we'll take a look at what each thing is and does. So starting off with the filming equipment, basically I have two lights as you can see here. These are my studio lights. So my actual day job aside from doing all of this stuff is I'm an editor and animator. So I have all of this equipment and all this editing stuff because that's what I do as my day job. So these lights here are Dasney. They're Dasney D50s and they're really good flat LED lights. And this one I have basically brightening up. See how much it's <laughs> blowing out that wall. This one basically brightens up the back wall. And over here, we have the front light, which basically just brightens up the front. So the sort of back one is backlighting that wall, so it sort of like brings me out from it. And then that one is brightening all of the forefront stuff as well. And then I have my little desk lamp, which highlights all of the model stuff. So those are the two lights that I use. Over here is the main camera. And this is a Sony a7S II with a 50 millimeter prime. It's a beautiful lens, it's a really good camera. And my second camera, which is what I'm using to film, sits on this, which is a overhead tripod. So we get our lovely overhead view shots of everything. The secondary camera, which I'm using to film now, is a Sony ZV-E10. Now I used to work for Sony as an editor, and before I left, I decided to just rinse my staff discount and just bought loads of Sony equipment that I can use for filming and editing and everything that I do. On the desk, we have a K66 Zeal Sound microphone, just a really cheap Amazon job. It was just something that I could have on the desk while I was painting and filming with other people so I didn't have to rely on a lapel mic. The desk lamp I have is just a sort of really cheap 15 pound jobby. Really nothing special. I'm gonna be upgrading this at some point when I get around to it. That's everything in terms of filming equipment, everything, that's the lights cameras, everything that I do to film everything. And when it comes to taking pictures of everything, so this is my light box here. Annoyingly, the fuse has blown on it, so the lights don't come on. But I have these little handy RGB lights. So you can get like nice different lighting and colors and everything with how you want to set up shots and everything. I also have this fun thing, which is like a little spinning plate. That's what I use to do all my reels and things when I'm doing like a product showcase. It will just sit on that and spin around and I'll have my camera on the tripod while it's doing that. And then I light it using these, using different colors and effects. Pretty good handy stuff all around. Over here is my main Ryzen build PC. So I have this set up to do my day job and all my editing and animating needs. And it's obviously comes in super helpful when it comes to doing all my editing for YouTube videos because I can have a nice editing setup basically. I have these speakers here. Before these speakers, I used to have some Yamaha HS5s, which were the best speakers I ever owned. And I used them when I did lots of music production. As I've sort of like stepped back away from that world and focused more on painting and editing, I've sort of scaled them down a bit because they're a lot easier and a lot more manageable in size. This is a voiceover mic that I use when I do voiceovers, obviously, in post. And it is a, it's a Zingyu. It's a, quite nice, it's got a nice little pop guard and it's got a desk arm so I can move it around. Very handy for when I'm laying down voice tracks on my editing once I've filmed them and edited them. Quite a nice sound from quite a relatively affordable mic. 
And yeah, that's how I edit all my videos and everything. Up there is where the lovely apron is stored. And I have these wonderful Elden Ring and Dark Souls art pieces up there, which was sent to me by the lovely company Lost in Cult and some lovely signed artwork from people I've met as well. So that there is the editing station. And if we take a look here, this is where I have all my prints that I've done over the past year. Quite extensive, some board game pieces as well. So now that we've done all that, let's hop into what equipment I use on the desk. Ugh. So here we are at the main frame A cam shot of the videos. So let's take a look at what I have and what I use. Over here is my lovely paint rack, which I got off of Etsy and all of my Citadel paints that I use are all up here. Up here is where I keep my contrast paints, inks, my airbrush, paint brushes, sculpting tools, things like that. And down here is where it gets a bit messier, where I've got all my sort of like flocking and terrain stuff and plastering things. My airbrush compressor is even further below down there, as you can see it. And extra tools and equipment, I all keep in this kind of tiered system on this desk, which is lovely and handy for keeping things nice and tidy. So my wet palette is a Chuko, Chukochi, Jusosi. One of those ones might be right, I'm not entirely sure. Um, it's just a cheap, cheap version of the sort of like nice red grass wet palettes and things that you can get. But yeah, it's a good, good handy wet palette. I've had this one for a long time now, as you can see. And the brushes that I use, I have a range of brushes. And for things like basing and things that don't require too much finesse, I kind of just mix between Citadel brushes because they're rel relatively inexpensive compared to the fancier ones. And then moving up to slightly fancier brushes that I have and use. We have some Winsor & Newton Series 7 Kalinsky Sable brushes. They're very nice, very good for fine detailing. They keep their shape very well as long as you look after them. And cheap Amazon brushes that I use for all manners of basing and glue uses, as you can see with this one. This one has fully become a glue brush. And lastly are my fine brushes, which are my Artist Opus brushes. These are absolutely incredible. I've got some Series Ds, which are <laughs> Ds nuts. Series Ds dry brushes, which um, obviously this one's had a fair, this one's had a fair bit of use. This one's relatively newer. They're amazing for dry brushing, stippling, all things like that. Very, very good. Then we've got some Series Ms of different sizes, ranging from wider to thinner and amazing precision brushes. Absolutely recommend these, 100%. Speaking of caring for brushes, I use this Masters brush cleaner. I'm pretty low on it now, I haven't got much left, but after every painting session, I always make sure to give my good brushes a good wash. So that's the paints and the paint brushes covered. Now for the airbrush, I use the Eyewater Eclipse, which is fantastic. I started off with the Engda, which is just a little 30 pound cheap alternative, good starter airbrush to work with, sort of get used to how airbrushing works. I've still kept the Fengda compressor, which you've seen down below. That's what I've been using the entire time I've been airbrushing. And then I decided to see what the difference is when I upgraded to a proper, decent airbrush. And the difference is, it's enormous. Like the control, the flow, everything about it just feels better. You get more even coverage. You pay for what you get. And the 30 pound one, it did its job. And it sort of taught me the ways of airbrushing. And then once I felt comfortable with doing it, I then decided it was time to upgrade to a much better one. If you're looking for a good airbrush, the Eclipse is fantastic. There are more expensive ones out there. I can't comment on them because I only use this one. And then this is a nice little cleaning kit that comes with it, which is really handy for when you're cleaning your airbrush. And when it comes to the airbrush care, I have my little tool pot here, but in it is some pipe cleaners and things. You know, they come really handy with cleaning your airbrush because you can get right up into all the little pipes and nozzles within the airbrush and just give it a good old clean with these. I also use Vallejo airbrush cleaner to give a good deep clean to my airbrush. And I also use airbrush thinner from Vallejo as well. You know, airbrushing, I'm still not 100% savvy with. It's still something I'm learning as I go. But you know, the more you do it, the more you learn, the more you know. So I'm just keeping on keeping on. So that's the airbrush covered and all the other tools and everything that I use. This right here is just a sort of standard measuring cutting mat. Normally people don't airbrush onto these like I have done because obviously it messes everything up and you can't use it as a measuring mat anymore. I just use it to protect the desk basically now. 
And that, I think, pretty much covers it. I also have in here my hot wire cutter, which is a Proxon 230E. So I'll probably leave that for another video because it's not technically part of my equipment list because I haven't used it yet. Um, so I'll probably do like a little sort of unboxing video and a tested video when I'm doing a bit more work with dioramas and foam cutting. So I guess lastly is just to show off the apron that I have. It's a really, really cool design. I really like it. It's from a company called Cotswold Hipster. And you can get like a little embroidered strap on there. You can get it customized whenever you want. And when I started doing this, my girlfriend bought me this actually. She bought me this apron and she thought it'd be really cute to call me a master modeler, which is very sweet. Yeah, really cool, lovely, sturdy apron. So if you're looking for a fun, rustic style apron, I would 100% recommend this from Cotswold Hipster. I'm, I don't know where they ship to, but I'll leave a link in the description. So the last thing to go through is where I do all of my printing. It all happens in this wardrobe here. So in here, is where I do all of my printing. This is basically just a antique wardrobe that I got off Gumtree. You know, it cost me 30 quid. Someone was getting rid of it, they were gonna bin it. So I thought, nope, let me take it. I'm gonna knock everything out and basically just sort of design a little enclosure where my printer and my wash station can sit with all of my useful tools and everything. And I can install a little ventilation system, which then goes out into this little filter or out the window just to expel any resin fumes, because that's very important to do. This wardrobe is in a sort of out room, in a room that we don't really use in this house because you don't really want the fumes of of resin and things, even though you have a ventilation system and things where I can pull this down and suck out any of the fumes that are coming up from the printer while it's working. Resin fumes can still linger, so don't have a printer in any rooms that you are habiting. You, you don't want that. What I'll probably do is I will probably do a separate printing video to sort of show you how I have my printer set up and everything because I have like a thermometer which gauges and regulates temperature which then is connected to a heater on the inside. You know I'll probably go into that more detail in another video. This is the Anycubic Mono X and that is my Huron Wash Plus I think it's called. It's a sort of bigger version of the standard wash and cure station for washing bigger prints and things like that. But basically everything happens in this wardrobe enclosure that I've put together. So I think that pretty much covers everything when it comes to my equipment list and how everything kind of works together, where I do all of my printing and painting and filming and editing. As ever with everything that I've listed in this video, everything will be listed down below so you can click on the link and purchase whatever it is that you might want. If you use the links below to purchase anything that you might want that you've seen listed in today's video, they are affiliate links. So I'll get a little kickback if you use those links. So you'll be helping support the channel. That would be absolutely incredible. And yeah, that pretty much wraps it all up. If I have missed out anything, or if there is something specific that I haven't discussed today or shown or talked about that you want me to talk about and go in depth more about, then leave a comment below, let me know, drop me a comment below, and I can give a bit more info and insight into separate things that I might not have covered today, because there is a lot to cover. I probably have missed something at some point. As I said earlier, I will be doing a separate video for my 3D printing to sort of show you the 3D printer in a bit more detail and the accessories that I use that help me get better prints, the settings that I use, all the sort of tips and things that I learned from making mistakes as I went along, because it's a very intensive hobby to get into. So if there's anything specific you want from that video, please let me know and I'll be sure to cover it. Just before I wrap up this video, I just wanted to point out that everything that I've listed in this video is of like higher end quality and, and professional standard, just because it's what I use for my job. It's not to say that you need all these kinds of things that I've mentioned just to be able to make a YouTube video. It's not the case at all. When we started out just doing the Instagram channel, we just used the light box, we used an iPhone, and it works an absolute treat. So don't feel like you need to go out and buy all these things to be able to make a YouTube video. I'm just listing out what I have from what I've accumulated over the years working in the industry. So just wanted to clear that up before we ended this video. But with all that being said, that brings us to a close here. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you found it somewhat useful or insightful. If you did, please be sure to drop this video a like, leave a comment, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all next week. Peace out, you lovely little hollows.